Welcome to our MQP presentation. I'm Dolores Jackson. I'm Johnny Jackson. This is our presentation on interactive illustration. Now I bet you may be wondering, what's interactive illustration? Well, look for yourself. That was the project, a simple 20-page illustration book containing creatures and beasts found on a fictional island. The book, titled The Creatures of Zippel's Isle, was just supposed to be a simple book that you were soon to be reading on one of your days off or something. We wanted this to be an interactive book, and moreover, we wanted this to be a book that looked nice. It involves illustrations first and foremost. Both members of this team lean more towards the artistic side than the tech savvy side and are mostly proficient at drawing. So we geared this project to focus on our strengths. And it's also interactive. We didn't just want people to look at the art, we wanted some communication on some level. We felt that interactive books were a very good medium for this. Technological, yes, but it emphasizes uh, the art within over the tech itself. We made it our artistic goal to create a set of unique, eye-catching characters. We didn't want to go for public domain creatures or well-known creatures from mythology because in either case it would still take a lot of good time and a lot of good research to get these characters properly right. And a poorly done creature isn't a creature that we should have done at all. We also wanted professional quality images, which meant we uh, we drew all these images in for, at 300 dots per image, perfect print quality, and also gave enough detail that I would be visible no matter what size you saw it at. In terms of tech, we wanted to make an interactive website that was engaging for the viewer, which meant a lot of hands-on interactivity with the people who get onto the site. And because this is a mostly digital affair, and because this is going to be a website, we wanted to make it the book format digital as well. For our primary tools working on this project, it surmounted to using HTML5 and CSS in spades. On the technological side of things, the website was easily edited by using HTML5 and CSS, which allowed us to edit it appropriately. We also used a handful of JavaScript programs that allowed us to utilize a very cheap but effective version of the product we wanted to build. For the artistic side, we almost exclusively used Adobe Photoshop to create all of the images and some of the GIFs that would be used and scrapped. The least we could say about our creature quota was that we had almost met it. We had 15 different creatures that we were able to put into the book. Although some of them did end up taking from certain cultures, that's just unavoidable because nothing new is under the sun. The overall aesthetic of the book was supposed to be weathered and old yet official. So we looked a lot of encyclopedias for the cover. The cover that you see for the Alpha Fist build looks quite a bit weathered and quite a bit or neat, but it tried to capture the spirit we were going for well. 
The insides of the book are just as important as the outsides. There are two major components we were looking at here. For the monster design, we wanted something very detailed yet eerie, and especially something we could do with a limited palette. For these, we looked at the works of Stephen Gamble, the illustrator behind scary stories to tell in the dark. And, in addition, we wanted it to look handmade, like someone had just drawn it in the middle of a storm, or other situations. For these, we looked at field journals, and especially the Voynich Manual, which had a lot of the aesthetic we were looking for. We tried, as best we could, to establish these rules into all of our work. For example, on the left, we have the Sky Whales. These take from the Gimmel inspiration we had, in that they are extremely detailed, they work on a limited palette, and they do look eerie and not of this world. On the right is the style of inspiration we had for the field manuals, where everything looks more hand-drawn. One of the first interactivity methods that we had for this program was to make it look like a book and act like a book. To this end, we looked for various programs that would allow us to put it on a website without any problems. We found that Turn.js offered us the widest range of abilities for this, and it was easy to implement in both our time and for our budget. In order to make the images come alive on a limited time frame and budget, we decided to include an illusion of death. Looking at programs such as Omnivert and the 2D digital JavaScript program Pixie.js, we discovered that this was achievable. The project contains five different images, each with their own illusion of death page. For example, we have page seven's fish man. On the left, you see an unedited picture of him. In the middle, you see his death map. All lighter parts go towards the front of the page. All darker parts go towards the back. The result of putting it in a program such as Omnivert or Defi or Pixie.js is this on the right. We also learned how to manipulate death maps in order to give off certain effects. For the fish man, for example, we wanted it to look more aquatic, so hopefully that shows up in the GIF. We had other methods of interactivity as well. For example, we had dynamic music, so as you progress through the book, the music would change accordingly. However, this was harder to implement in Chrome than we thought, so we just changed it to a simple ambience track. For another, we sought to do other special pages, but we're only able to implement one. This would be where the great fish resides. Other scrapped methods of interactivity that we couldn't fully implement are layered animations, for example. When we had tried to implement them in turn.js, the page would simply not appear. The animations would, but the page would not, so we scrapped that entirely. On the right, you just see an animation that we found tacky so we wouldn't do that for the entire program. But despite all the effort that we put into this book, the big question we wanted to know was, was this good? Was this favorable? That's what we needed a test period for. As our project took place from A to B term, and therefore some time ago before the epidemic, our chosen test date would be Alpha Fest, which is near the end of B term. What we needed was an audience of young adults that may have a slight interest in fantasy. An Alpha Fest with a primarily young adult patronage was the perfect opportunity to reach out to our book's audience. To that end, we ended up securing and getting the opinions of nine people during our testing period. Of the nine responses we did receive, Art was regarded the most positively, but many patrons asked about the continuity between each creature, and due to the fact that we had excised much of the text that would have said so, this was to be expected. We provided a group of words to choose from to describe progression through the book, and with five votes each, the highest responses were mesmerizing and innovative. But we had to keep lookout because fun and dull, at three votes each, were also tied. One person even said it was disorienting, which is not something we intend for the book. The characters are supposed to be somewhat mesmerizing and somewhat disorienting, but book progression is not. What text was 
kept was regarded as legible, which is a very good plus, but a minus was that prob we had problems getting the ambient music to play during the, some of the early tests, which means some players were not able to hear it. In the end, the downsides turned out to be consistency, unused text and animations, and lots and lots of bugs. But there is a silver lining in all of this, in that in the future, we'll know what to fix for later iterations. What we want to do is optimize this book better for mobile, because we know that people are going to be using mobile as well as their laptops or computers. We're going to schedule ourselves better so that the elements we want to get implemented can get implemented. We're going to focus on one aspect of our project and do it very, very well. And we're going to make sure that our interactive elements can actually be interacted with. That's going to be it for this project. We'd like to give a special shout out to our project advisors, Ralph Sutter and Brian Moriarty. And we'd also like to give a special shout out to the Alpha Fest organizers for allowing us to have a space for our testing, and also the playtesters for giving us very nuanced and good criticism. And most of all, we'd like to thank you, you for putting up with us for this long. Yeah. Thanks, everybody! See you next time!